With the last episode of Blue Lock Season 2 officially wrapping up the third selection arc, excitement and worries at an all-time high as we gear up for Episode 6. This upcoming episode will kick off the highly anticipated matchup between the Blue Lock 11 and Japan U20 team, which many argue to be the best match in the series. We actually just got some teasers that give us sneak peeks into the action, complete with actual shots from the U20 match that hint at the quality we can expect from the back half of the season. In today's video, we'll be taking an honest look at those as I give you my opinion and predict what we can expect to come. That's not all though, as we'll also be diving into some insights from an animator who recently shared his experience working on Blue Lock Season 2. After posting a TikTok discussing his work, he revealed some intriguing details about the animation process and challenges he faced during production in an interview, which spells a sad, bleak future for what's to come. Before we hear his thoughts though, let's take a look at these new teasers for the U20 kickoff next week. The U20 Japan player introduction movie starts off with a colored spread from the U20 game that honestly looks so amazing, it gave me a great idea. Why not just take the profits from Blue Lock and just color the entire manga, because at this point, I'd prefer that over anything we've had so far. On a real note, it obviously looks super great considering I used it for the thumbnail, so let's give them golden stars when earned. The player introduction officially starts with the U20 goalkeeper, Fukaku Gen, who we see in a vibrant crimson pink goalkeeper kit, which I personally love. The sequence briefly shown for him is when Itoshirin tried to create his brother's opening goal from chapter 115, just two chapters later in 117. However, Fukaku Gen managed to barely get a finger on it, redirecting it into and out from the crossbar. There's absolutely no animation other than slight, very slight distortion of the hair, and Itoshirin taking the shot, nor Fukakugen reaching to save it, and they even go as far as to change the angle on being shot to show it from behind rather than a front-facing angle. That perspective could totally still be included in the anime cut and just not be shown here, but as for what is shown, they just added wind effects and shook the screen to imply movement. Even his shoelaces are stiff as the ball flies through the air, which sounds like an insane nitpick, but these things are really the bare minimum. Next up is the right back Nero, with his spiky white hair and cute button-like eyes. The teaser shows a scene of him defending against Yukimiya, sliding in front of him with a burst of lightning and a crimson red aura. This moment is animated in just 7 frames, but it still looks very impressive, proving that even minimal movement can look great when used effectively. There's also a close-up of him taunting the Blue Lock 11, claiming that they can't match his speed. Although that line doesn't add much to the scene, it does capture his voice actor who I know is Kazutoro from Tokyo Revengers. Following Fukaku Gen and Neru, the center back Neo is introduced with his distinctive look, long jet black hair and an oddly styled beard of three shaved lines. While he might look even better without the facial hair, that's the design we're working with unfortunately. The teaser does mostly stick to close-ups of his face as he talks, leaving little to showcase animation or hype-wise. After him, we see the main center back Oliver Aiku, introduced with an intense stare down between him and Isagi. This moment appears to be from the Cops and Robbers chapter, and it's a clean, impactful shot paired with a close-up of Aiku. Thankfully, it seems like the animators paid extra attention to the fan-favorite characters like Aiku, adding noticeable movements to his jersey, hair, and everything around to give the visuals more life. Following Aiku, we're introduced to Darai, the left-back who stands out with his unique design covered in intricate tattoos. He might have a Buddhist-inspired influence similar to Igarashi, especially with his reference to yin and yang on the field, though that's just a theory. The first shot of Darai amusingly shows a static PNG sliding across the screen, likely intentional though to illustrate his ability to create after images, mimicking similar scenes from other animes like Kyuyula from Hunter x Hunter. This effect is further emphasized in the following sequence, where there's noticeably more movement as Darai marks and attempts to defend against Blue Lock's Atoya Ida. The defensive midfielder Hayate comes next, sporting a relatively simple design, but his spiky blonde hair adds some flair. His sequences are impressively fluid, showcasing more dynamic action as he attempts to intercept what looks like a shot from either Isagi or Itoshirin. And the attention to detail in this scene really stands out. Hayate's voice actor Kensho Ono is a big name known for his iconic roles such as Jorno in JoJo's Golden Wind, Diluc in Genshin Impact, and appearances in major sports series like Kuroko no Basket. We're then introduced to the second defensive midfielder, Katsuki, who has a unique, almost don't starve together look with his deadpan stare. For those of you who played the game, you know what I'm talking about. His long hair is held back with a thin headband, which adds to his overall odd design. Unfortunately, Katsuki's scenes are sparse, with a brief moment of him sliding in for a defensive hold, animated as a single static frame that doesn't add much visually. His voice actor Taito Bon is known for voice acting Jinwoo in solo leveling, and he's also featured in Gogo Loser Rangers and Oshinoko, showing his versatility. The right winger is introduced next, and he arguably has the goofiest design on the team. As the second ginger after Sendo, who at least looks good, Teru sports black and white stripes in his hair, a receding hairline, and an unsettling expression, making for a truly questionable character design. His scenes are limited to a close-up of him receiving a pass, which doesn't add much action nor look good. However, looking that way, I don't really mind. 
the left winger show follows, showcasing what might be the most bland design on the team. With slicked back black hair and a lifeless expression, he doesn't bring much excitement to the table. His sequence lacks any movement at all, leaving nothing to discuss, so let's move on. Finally, we see the center for its Sendo Shudo, who surprises many with his ginger hair as everyone thought he was blonde. Fun fact, we actually got a glimpse of this in a colored manga spread from the Ubers arc, where the team dyed Bato's hair with red stripes before their matchup against BM. Sendo appears in three separate shots, two of which are simply static close-ups or unimportant frames. The third shot, however, captures him making a pass, animated with about three frames. Definitely an improvement over a moving PNG, so no complaints here. To wrap things up, we have the offensive midfielder and captain Itoshi Sai, who's playing in this match purely to evaluate the next generation of Japanese talent. Unfortunately, his shots aren't particularly exciting, as we mostly see his aura highlighted and a close-up of him gazing up towards the camera, leaving us hoping that they don't fumble our glorious king. Moving on to the juicy stuff, we actually have some insider info to explain why Season 2 is the mid-tier quality we have instead of the greatness we deserve and what's to come. In a recent interview with the YouTube channel Ari Kendo, animator Martin King shed light on the difficulties he faced while working as a freelance animator for Bulog Season 2. This comes as no surprise that he would do an interview considering he made a TikTok that went absolutely viral talking about how the production on Blue Lock went, how his experiences were, basically told everybody that it was not great. He explained that the production schedule was tight, leading to the removal of essential resources necessary for quality animation. This resulted in many animators being capped or altered, ultimately affecting the final product a lot. He emphasized that the responsibility for these shortcomings does not lie with the animators who came after him or him, as they likely did their best under challenging circumstances, so please keep this in mind, do not send hate to the animators. King criticized the production committee of various animes for prioritizing financial gain over the well-being of their workers, which he definitely felt contributed to the issues in Season 2. Initially, he was slated to work on 5-6 to six episodes, but after completing his work on the second, he ultimately chose not to continue with the series, expressing disappointment in the circumstances listed. King pointed out that these challenges are not unique to Blue Lock, but reflect broader issues in the anime industry citing other series like JJK, Tower of God, and specifically Uzumaki that have also suffered from their rushed production timelines and production committees not really working with them well. He also says specifically at one point in the newer interview that he believes it to be a snowball effect, indirectly implying that the upcoming episodes will only decrease in quality. If you want to watch the full interview and video yourself, it'll be a link down in the description, but I will warn you, the animator doesn't really answer a lot of questions directly. Like for example, Arikendo asked him for an estimate of like what the timeline for Blue Log Season 2 was, because most animes are like one to one and a half years to get worked on before they're pushed out. And he doesn't really respond with any specific number, but hey, it is what it is. Overall, despite the worrying animation in the teasers and the grim insights from King, I'm still holding on to hope as a Blue Lock fan that these key scenes will shine. Even with inconsistent quality of Season 2, they've managed to produce some banger moments like Isagi's activation of Metavision and Itoshirin's kill shot. I really hope they do justice to every single goal in the U20 game, because each week should result in Blue Lock being on the trending tab. Specifically, I feel like Shido Ryuze deserves better representation, as his moments and goals prior to episode 5 were kinda scuffed. I'm also so eager to see Ryuze on the field in action together, as we've already seen Sai free the demon from his cage. What do you think about the current state of Blue Lock Season 2 though? More importantly, comment below on which moments you're most excited to see animated. Anyways, with that wrapping up all the latest information on Blue Lock Season 2, I want to thank you all so much for tuning into the channel. If you love Blue Lock and want to stay updated while supporting the channel, please hit that subscribe button, share your thoughts in the comments, and feel free to join my community discord linked in the description. I hope you all have a fantastic day, and I'll see you in the next video.